Now God, who has this same inherent potential, did something. He introduces this principle in creation. Turn to Genesis chapter 1. Hi everyone, welcome again to PR on Dairy Channel. This is part two of the message that Dr. Miles Munro preached during Shiloh 2002 in Kanan Land, Ota, Nigeria, with God's servant Bishop David Oyedebo. I will highly recommend if you have not watched part one of it, kindly you can do so and be blessed as you watch. Welcome. Verse 11 is the first introduction of the principal potential, the secret about you. It's found in verse 11. God says in the last statement of that verse, I have placed the seed of everything in itself. Turn to verse 12. He repeats himself. He said, I have placed the seed of everything where? In itself. God says the way I created the world and everything else is I always place the seed of a thing in itself. When Jesus came, he tried to explain to mankind who he was. He said, the Son of Man is like a seed. That means everything that I am going to become is trapped in me. I have placed the seed of everything where? In itself. What God is saying is, Whenever I create something to become, I hide it in it. I repeat, God says, whenever I create something to become, I hide it in the thing. In other words, whatever thing is destined to become is trapped in the thing. That's the way God created everything. He put the thing in the thing and that is called potential. God therefore introduces the most beautiful principle of life in these verses. He calls it the seed. I have in my hand right now, just imagine this, an apple seed And I put it in my hand, and I ask you, what do you see? What would you answer? An apple seed. Now that is a fact, but it's not the truth. What do I have in my hand? An apple seed. That is a fact, but not the truth. Why? What is a fact? Write the word fact down. A fact is a description of the present state of a thing. What is a fact? A fact is a description of the present state of a thing. I repeat, what is a fact? A fact is a description of the present state of a thing. So in my hand, the present state is an apple seed. That is a fact. But it's not the truth. What is truth? Truth is the original information about a thing. Truth is the true essence of a thing. Truth is the reality of a thing. In other words, the fact always hides the truth. The fact always hides the truth. It is a fact I have an apple seed in my hand, but the truth is I have what? An apple tree. But that's not the complete truth, because the complete truth is, in the seed in my hand, the truth of an apple tree, but on the tree are fruit. So in the seed in my hand, I have an apple tree that has apple fruit. But that's not the complete truth either, because the seed that has the tree, that has the apples, the apples also get seeds. But that's not the truth completely either because the seed has a tree that has fruit, that has seeds, that have apples, that have seeds, that have trees, that have fruit, with seeds, with trees, with fruit, that have apples, that have seeds, with trees, with fruit, with seeds, with apples, with seeds, with fruit, with seeds. So I ask you, what do I have in my hand? You can tell me a fact 
or tell me the truth. The fact is, I have an apple seed in my hand. The truth is, I have a forest. God says he created everything just like that. Right now, you are sitting next to a fact. But you don't know the truth. Why? Because the truth is a secret that is hidden in God. Only God knows the true glory of that person. Tell your neighbor, one of these days, I'm going to show you the truth. I'm a multi-billionaire. It's a fact that you are living in a small hut right now, but the truth is you own a castle. It's a fact that you walked to this place, but the truth is you own 10 cars. It's a fact that you had to catch the bus this time, but the truth is next year you'll be driving your own automobile. You see, the facts. It is a fact that your church is renting at the moment, but the truth is you own 5,000 acres. It's a fact that your church is 200 people, but the truth is it's 20,000. God knows the truth. And that's why the Bible says the truth will make you free. Tell your neighbor, don't judge me by the facts. The truth is on the way. Who would have known that trapped in the manger was the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? In every seed, God hides a forest. In every bird, God hides a flock. In every cow, God hides a herd. In every fish, God traps a school. In every boy, God hides a great man. In every girl, God hides an awesome woman. God always hides things. God does not give us trees. He that giveth seed. Everything God gives is seed. That's why you don't look too significant at the moment. People don't know who you really are. Tell your neighbor one of these days, you'll remember you sat next to me. Tell your neighbor one of these days, you're going to be glad you knew me. When I was a baby, I'm talking about me now. <laughs> when I was a baby, my eldest sister, in a family of 11 kids, I'm number six, so my eldest sister used to help my mother take care of us, and I was born with asthmatic condition, and many times I almost died. And my sister used to tell me stories. She said, in the night, I would turn blue. I would stop breathing. I would literally die. And she would get up right in time, take me out of the crib, shake me, and she would bring me back to life. And she would stay with me all night to make sure I didn't die. She would rub me down with all kinds of ointments and put leaves on me just to keep me alive. And she told me this story many times. She said, many times, you literally died and I caught you in time and stayed up all night pacing the floor in that little wooden house keeping you alive, keeping you alive, making sure you didn't die and my mother was so tired because she had to take care of the other kids all day I had to keep you alive. Today my eldest sister is my secretary, I pay her salary her husband is my chief financial officer, I pay his salary. Her daughter is my receptionist, I pay her salary. So I tell my sister often, did you ever imagine that every night you walked with me, you were holding your boss? Now tell your neighbor, be careful how you treat me. I could be your next boss. Shout hallelujah, somebody. Do 
not despise any bishop, any pastor, any member of the church. Don't despise them. You don't know who they are. That's why God throws no one away. Because only he knows the secret about them. I mean, when God looks, what does he see? He doesn't see the seed, he sees the forest. God is the only one who I could even imagine to understand a little. But how can God think this great? God looked at a murderer and a, a fugitive and he looked at this fugitive and a murderer and inside the murderer everybody saw a murderer and a fugitive running from the law but God looked at him and God saw in this murderer Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy in a murderer the first five books of the Bible were written by a murderer God looked in the murderer and he saw more. He saw the Ten Commandments. He saw the civic laws of countries. He saw the hygiene laws. He saw all the, the, the deep laws of God trapped in the murderer. And that's why God didn't throw Moses away. I wonder what he sees in you tonight. Everybody say potential. God looked at a prostitute named Rahab and God saw the lineage of Jesus. God looked at a dirty shepherd boy and God saw the king on the inside. God looked at a coward named Gideon and he saw the great mighty man of valor. God looked at a serial killer who killed so many people. We don't know how many he killed. But God looked at that serial killer and God saw Face the second Corinthians, Galatians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Timothy, Titus, Thessalonians, Philemon. He saw them all in a serial killer named Saul. I wonder what God sees inside of you. He's going to get everything inside of you out of you in Jesus' name. That means there are books trapped in you. There are movies to be made trapped in you. There are businesses trapped in you. There are big buildings trapped in you. There are all kinds of investments trapped in you. There are leaders of the country trapped in you. And God is saying, I won't throw you away. Aren't you glad he's not going to throw you away? Jesus did not die for a person. He died for more than that. He died for what the person is carrying. He knows what he put inside of you. That is why, you know, when we have altar calls many times, people come to the Lord. I used to wonder, why did God say, if one person comes and repents, all of heaven goes crazy? I ask God why? Why do the angels rejoice when one human comes and repents before God? The Lord said because the humans can't see what heaven knows. The humans see the seed coming, God sees the forest coming. The humans see a man coming, God sees a multi-billion dollar business coming. The human sees a woman coming, God sees the first female president of Nigeria coming. And that is why every time a human comes to Christ, we should join the angels and begin to praise and worship and thank God because we got greatness walking down the aisle being reclaimed by the manufacturer, God himself. God doesn't just redeem people, he redeems destinies. Lift your hands and thank God he will redeem your destiny. You are not saved just to come to a church meeting and sing and clap and shout. But Paul says in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10, Paul says, you are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. For what reason? To do the good works that were prepared for you. How long? Before the world began. You are here tonight because God wants you to release all of your potential. 
I want to drive this point home before we leave tonight. I asked God as I sat in that high school with all the British teachers talking to me. And all my teachers were from another country. They didn't look like us, didn't look like you. And they called me all kind of names. They called us 39 kids in one class. They said that you are half-breed creatures. Your brain is just above the animals. You can't learn. You never mount to anything. All we can do is teach you art and music because your brain cannot handle complicated technical issues. And that's the way they spoke to us as I grew up in school. They were from England, you know. And they began to say things that I almost believed. At age 13, I began to ask God some questions. Little teenager, I said, God, if you exist, am I really a monkey? Because my teachers call me a monkey. Oh, yes, they did. And they said, you are a bunch, a class of monkeys. Your brain is not as developed as ours, but we will teach you what we can, whatever you can learn. And I said, God, am I a monkey? And I remember our homeroom teacher was from Scotland, Mr. Robinson. Oh, he was rough. One time he came to my desk, he said, you black nigger, you will never learn. You are nothing but a half-breed. Your brain, you cannot learn. I cried that day. I almost believed him. Matter of fact, all the books in my classroom, none of the kids in the book looked like me. They looked like the teachers. So I began to think, maybe I am a monkey. And I began to, to feel the hurt. And I said, God, if you exist, you better tell me now because I can't believe you would make me a monkey. Am I half-breed? That night, the Lord's spoke to my heart as a 13-year-old boy. I gave my life to Christ that night in the back of my yard in the house, out, out on, the, on the, the ground in the dirt. And God reassured me that he was great of all men. My life changed at age 13. I began to read that Bible for myself. I went to Sunday school all my life and all the Sunday school books were filled with white people. So I figured God was white. But that night I read the Bible, and I began to read the Bible, and at age 14 I had read through the whole New Testament, and I saw things I never knew. The Word of God began to work on my mind. And one verse of the Bible became a real life to me. It's Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, as a teenager, that changed my life. It says, Now unto him, son, who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above, far beyond all you can ever ask, think, or imagine, according to the power that worketh within you, to him be glory. That changed my life. Suddenly I realized that there was a power inside of me that God wanted to use to do beyond what I can imagine. So I said, I imagined myself being an A student. I was an F student. I went back to school and made a decision. I said, never again will any teacher teach me. That was my decision at age 14. I won't allow any teacher to teach me anymore. I'm going to teach myself. That day, my life changed academically. I began to study all those books. Mr. Robertson was an algebra teacher. And I was getting F in algebra. I picked up that book, took it home. I studied the formulas myself. I spent hours educating myself, went back to school, did my homework, went from an F to a D, from a D to a C, from a C student to a B student, from a B student to an A student. I went in six months from the last in the class to the head of the class. 
not because of a teacher, but because of the book called the Bible and the Spirit of God teaching me that I was more than what they said. I graduated top of my school. The last day of classes I walked out on assembly and all the teachers were there and all the kids were there and I was recognized as the top student in the school from an F to the highest student in the school. They came and bought me a plaque and they said things about me very nice. <laughs> the monkey was doing good now. I took the plaque, most distinguished student. I walked over to Mr. Robertson and I said, sir, this is for you, from a monkey. I gave him the plaque. A few years ago, I was in England teaching a leadership seminar and there was a long line of people to autograph books and I was autographing my new book and this old man walked up with a cane with three books in his hands three of my books two of them were real greasy and mashed up and he said can you autograph these for me and I said sure I autographed the books and I saw that they were all mashed up and all marked up and they were greasy and, and I said sir you have read my books Obviously, he said, oh, these books have changed my life. I am now a Christian. I thank God these books have taught me so much. I said, thank you very much, sir. I autographed the third book, and I gave him the books back. And I said, sir, thank you very much. Excuse me, sir. And he wouldn't move. There was a long line of people behind him. I said, sir, would you please allow the others to come? I thank you so much for coming tonight. And he just stood there and wouldn't move. And he said... I used to live in the Bahamas. I said, really, sir? He said, yes, I, I, I lived in Nassau. I said, that's where I'm from, sir. He said, yes. He said, I used to teach there. I said, where, sir? He said, C.H. Reeves High School. I said, that's the school I went to, sir. He said, I know. Uh, he said, don't you remember me? I said, no, sir. He says, look at the book. I looked at the book, and I saw the name I wrote. It was Mr. Robinson. I said, Mr. Robinson, and I stood up, and we embraced, and he almost broke my neck, and he was weeping, and weeping, and weeping, and he said, thank you, thank you, thank you. All I could hear my mind saying, he's reading the books of a monkey. your neighbor you don't know who I am so treat me with respect now shake my hands right now come on clap your hands and praise God one more time he has filled you with potential I want to conclude with this, listen to this carefully, because sitting in this crowd and standing outside are people history is going to write about. Oh, you didn't hear what I said. I said sitting next to you and standing next to you are people that history is going to write about. Don't believe anybody's opinion about you. Only God knows the truth about you. Come on, shout amen. The Bible says eyes have not seen and ears have never heard nor has it entered into the minds of any man what God has in store for you but you are coming soon in Jesus mighty name I cannot wait to see the truth in Nigeria This 
room is filled with facts. But 10 years from now when I come back, the country will be filled with truth. And Nigeria shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. God is omnipotent. God is omnipotent. I wonder who you are. But I want to close on. When you go home tonight after this few minutes, you won't be able to sleep well. Because you're going to be receiving so many dreams so fast, you're going to stay up just to write them down. Look at me. Here's who you are. Genesis chapter 1 verse 3. And God said, verse 6, and God said, verse 9, and God said, verse 11, and God said, verse 20, and God said, verse 14, and God said, verse 24, and God said, how did God create? By setting. <laughs> Everything God created, he said it, but he didn't just say it. God created according to a system. Here's a system. Whatever God wanted, he first decided the purpose. Then he decided what he wanted. Then he decided what he wanted made out of. And then God spoke to what he wanted made out of. And whatever God said that what he was speaking to came out of what he spoke to exactly what he said. By the tape. <laughs> I'm going to say it again. Listen carefully. Whatever God created, he used the same system. First he decided why he wanted something, purpose. Then he decided what he wanted, product. Then he decided the material that he wanted, what he wanted made out of. Then God went to the material and he spoke to the material and whatever he said to the material came out of the material exactly what he said. So when God created, he just spoke to things. He spoke to material and then he said to the material what he wanted to come out of the material. Verse 11, it says, and God wanted what? Vegetation. So God went to the earth and said, bring forth vegetation. They came out of the earth. So every plant on the planet came from the soil. That means every plant is 100% dirt. That's why when plants die, they go back to the earth. Look at verse 11. When God wanted trees, he spoke to the ground and said, bring forth vegetation. They came up. So every tree and every fruit and every herb is 100% dirt. Verse 14, read it. When God wanted stars, it says God spoke to the firmament. The firmament is nothing but gases. And God said, let there be lights. And the gases came together and our stars, like our sun, were born. Our sun is nothing but nuclear dense gases when stars die they dissipate back into gases that's where they came from that's what god spoke to verse 20 look at your chapter verse one of genesis when god wanted fish it says and god said to the waters bring forth living creatures and they came and so all the tree creatures in the sea are 100 percent water and dirt because that's what the sea is. It's dirt and water. When fish die, they go back to the earth and to the water. Verse 24, look at it. When God wanted animals, it says, and God spoke to the ground and said, bring forth living creatures. And up from the ground came all of the living creatures we see. Every animal is 100% dirt. That's why when animals die, they go back to the dirt. So when you eat an apple, you're eating dirt. When you eat fish, you're eating dirt.
When you eat a cow, you're eating dirt. It's all dirt. Watch this. So when God wanted to create, he used that principle. Verse 3, and God said. Verse 6, and God said. Verse 9, and God said. Verse 11, and God said. Verse 14, God said. Verse 20, God said. Verse 24, God said. When God wanted to create animals, he spoke to what? The ground. When he wanted fish, he spoke to what? The waters. When he wanted stars, he spoke to what? The firmament. When God wanted animals, he spoke to what? The earth. But look at verse 26. When God wanted you, he didn't speak to the ground or the earth or the water, but God spoke to himself. And God said, don't let the earth bring forth this one. Don't let the waters bring forth this being. Don't let the firmament bring forth this creature, but let us, glory, hallelujah, let us make man. And God said to himself, man, come forth. Out of God came a beautiful spirit. Man came out of God. That's why there are two words used to describe you. One is create, one is made. To make means to form from something that's already present. To create means to form from nothing. That's why both words are used in the Hebrew for you. God created you and God made you. A part of you came from something, a part of you came from nothing. The part that came from something is your body. The part that came from nothing is your spirit man. That's you. You came out of God. I'm getting that stuff. I'm sitting down in a minute. Watch this. That is why the word used for God is the word Abba. The Hebrew word for Abba, A-B-A, -A, write it down, it means source. Source. Abba is not a name, it's a title. God is called Abba because he is the source. The word Abba also means sustainer. The word father in English then, which we've abused very often, it actually means source and sustainer. God is called the father of all spirits. He's called the father of men. It seems to me he's the source from which we came. Why is this so important? I will demonstrate. Camera, get close, please. This is God. God said, let us make man. So he released some of himself and calls it man. Whatever is in God is in man. Whatever is in the bottle is in the glass. That's why when Jesus came, they said, show us Abba. He said, he that has seen the glass has seen the bottle. In other words, you are a piece of omnipotence trapped in a dirt suit. The key to life, however, is this. Wherever something comes from, it must remain attached to where it came from in order to live. Wherever something comes from, it must remain attached to where it came from in order to live. Plants come from the soil, they got to stay attached to the soil to bring forth their potential. Fish came from the waters, they got to stay in the waters to bring forth their potential. Stars came from the firmament, they got to stay in the firmament or they'll become a meteorite and die. Animals came from the soil, they must keep feeding on dirt in order to live, but that's where they came from. You came from God. 
You got to remain attached to God in order to live and to bring forth your full potential. And that is why may remain in Jesus said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you can ask anything you wish and it shall be done for you. I believe tonight God is releasing his potential through every one of you in Jesus' name. Stand up on your feet and tell your neighbor, if you knew who I was, you'd shake my hands. Tell your neighbor, the truth is coming. Lift your hands and thank God for the truth that's coming out of your life before you die. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father God. 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 Hold your neighbor's hands. I want to pray with you. Everybody hold somebody's hands all over this great property. Squeeze the hand you're holding. Tell your neighbor, I don't know who you are, but I want to see you before you die. Plants don't want soil. They need soil. Fish don't want water. Fish need water. Animals don't want to eat plants and other animals. They need to do it. You don't want God. Jesus said it in a simple way. I am divine. Without me, your body came from the dirt. That's why you eat dirt to maintain your body. But you came out of God. And Satan said to Jesus, you are hungry. Turn this dirt into dirt. <laughs> Jesus said, 